super-powered armpit hair. No kidding. Thank you, Amelia Clark. That's really what I needed in my life. That's right. Lots and lots and lots of armpit hair. Thank you, Amelia Clark. You really got that point across. So Amelia Clark's debut comic was every current year disaster that you could imagine it to be, with everything from political inserts. You can see this here, too. Job application. Listen to this. I'm a single mom. High school dropout. Chemical engineer, part-time sex worker, Thai food junkie, and a biological freak of nature. We're also greeted with more istophobic lecture than I thought you could fit into one speech bubble. Then quit spouting this binary, gender essentialist, transphobic, bilge rot jack. And well, let's just say on and on and on. Yeah, this, it's a 40-page lecture pretending to be escapism with a $6 price tag to boot. And the worst thing about it, it's intended to be that. That's what it says in the back here. You can see toxic masculinity brought up. You can see lecturing your kids, especially your sons, because of the ist and the phobia. Ah, fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. Oh, man. So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day. Excuse me as I put on my disguise here, too. Totally not that umbrella gun. Nope, this is that Parasol Gary again doing that review. Make sure share this everywhere. Also, feed that pesky algorithm while you're laughing. And if you haven't subbed, well, sub. And if you have, make sure you still are. Thank you. So, first thing, if you haven't heard of this comic book, this is Amelia Clark's debut. This is Mom or Mother of Madness, number one. It comes with a $5.99 price tag, and there's going to be three of these, all at 40 pages apiece. Now, as far as celebrities making or endorsing comic books goes, this has been going on for quite some time. People, they're welcome to do that. Make whatever you make. But still, we are talking about an industry that has been in dire disarray. You have comic book stores closing down by the droves. And when you think about what has mass appeal, well, I'll give you something like this, for example. Berserker from Keanu Reeves makes one $1.4 million on Kickstarter alone has been selling great in the comic book shops versus a comic book that, well, when you look at the advertisement, I mean, Amelia Clark's name being stamped on it, yeah, that helps out. But look at the headlines like this. Do you think this is going to have mass appeal? Do you really? Do you really want to step in and buy that for $6 a pop? You want to spend $18 plus tax to watch this go through because you have the power of menstruation and armpit hair. Now, if you find yourself thinking, this doesn't sound very fun at all, that umbrella guy. Well, you know what? It's not meant to be fun. How dare you think that? This, it's meant to be a social lecture disguised as empowerment, feigning to be escapism, when really, it's wanting to educate our boys young. Then we have a chance at beating this problem, talking about toxic masculinity, to a pulp. Why? Because it affects everyone in society. And while we're at it, let's call out the capitalistic structure and any other thing we want to rant about, too. Now, maybe it's just me, and maybe this makes me some kind of monster, but you know what? I am tired of celebrities trying to call out that quote-unquote capitalistic structure while being worth $20 million. That's what Amelia Clark's net worth is, while also trying to sell me said lecture at $6 a pop. Maybe that takes something away from it, yeah? And if you're thinking to yourself, well, at least Amelia Clark disclosed this, that umbrella guy. She told you what it was about, you know, so you can make an informed decision. Yeah, about that. You know, you have to go in 39 pages before you actually get told. This, it's not meant to be fun. This thing, it's meant to be something else. It's probably going to sap the joy out of your life. But hey, you know, thanks for the money. I hope you pick up the next ones as well. Now, granted, you can see this lecture formulating right from go. You and I are going to peruse those first few pages here, starting out with a hello there. At least that's not a hey there, right? Clapton Art Museum, New York City, March 2049. My name is Maya Cooper. By the way, I wonder about these credentials, too. I'm 29 years old, okay? You're a single mom. High school dropout chemical engineer. Do you ever see something and you think one of these things is not like the other? Part-time sex worker, Thai food junkie, biological freak of nature. Scorpio and blood moon rising, no drama, no water signs. <laughs> oh, match.com. So funny. And just to make sure people don't think that I've skipped pages, I kept the dialogue here. Why? Because look how much of a speech you get. Again, this is page one. I like Ruth Bader Ginsburg's speeches, Martha Stewart living. I enjoy more children's television shows than it's probably healthy. I lie to myself every January about using 
the elliptical I bought for four years ago for anything more than an expensive clothes hanger. I get anxiety from feeling like I don't listen to enough podcasts about controlling anxiety, and I made a pacifist run on Undertale my first time through, including escaping the bullet hell. Thank you very much. Oh, that's so cringy. Same page, just to say. I'm currently trapped schmoozing in an Upper West Side corporate after party as part of my boss's entourage for a quote-unquote female empowerment in the workplace initiative. The last CFO had to step down after getting caught soliciting what turned out to be several thousand Mexican scorpions in a trench coat as part of a viral prank sensation. So here we are. Ah, yeah, that's your background. At least the art looks good, though, right? And this? This is my own private nightmare, (laughs) you and me both. Now, from here, you're going to get your ism lecture, and it is so heavy-handed. Every male in this panel is pretty much going to be some type of monster. Every female, when they speak, they've got to confront that lingo, because what terrible human beings. You start with your speaker here. I'm so excited for us to be hosting the first Women in the Workplace event. It's so great to give all of you hard-working gals the respect you deserve. Thanks for putting up with all or tomfoolery. No lawsuits allowed. Joke it. Can I get a hashtag me too? What time is it? Oh, up. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so good. So funny. Now here you have female talking about business. You have somebody else saying, hey, you know, I want to put something in there as well. And yeah, dismissal because female. I know you were going to speak up, but you don't need to be here, darling. We're just talking shop. You know, you don't need to be here, darling. Then you have guys in the background. They're looking at the pictures here. God, they don't make them like that anymore. Great to be in an event, quote unquote, celebrating women and they really celebrate their quote unquote greatest attributes. Ha ha ha. Then you have these folks arguing, look, I don't want to ruin the night. Then quit spouting this binary gender essentialist transphobic bilge rot, Jack. Calm down. Don't be all emotional like that. Just give me a smile. Dun, dun, dun. Asking a female to smile again. So current, so stunning, so bright. Now, all of that is meant as a setup. So, oh my God, look at this embarrassing moment here. Oh, Maya. Oh, look at all these people. Disgusting. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. Nasty woman. Filthy. What do you mean, natural? Yep, all of that there, so you can embrace the power of the armpit hair. That's right, that's your setup where she can finally freak out. She can break a glass after she hears some more ism in the background. Look at that armpit hair snaking out there too, letting her in. Oh yeah, doesn't that make you want to read this? Doesn't it make you want to invest your time in more? Yep, a lot. A lot of armpit hair in this book. You notice this entire frame is made out of it because again, They want to drill in the point that this isn't ladylike. Remember, too, while you're fighting that toxic masculinity. Yeah, kids, remember, when you're fighting that toxic masculinity and trying to combat those negative stereotypes, you need two things. First of all, you need negative male associations every other page. That's what this book pretty much has. Look at these guys here. They're going to jack her up, you know, because again, hey, out of nowhere, that makes sense. And also, you got to have plenty plenty of profanity. That's how you teach the children, apparently. Ah, yeah. Lectures from people that could buy you a thousand times over. Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. But anyway, let me know what you think about this stuff. As always, too, appreciate the heck out of you. You make this channel work, so thank you. Want to help out the channel in different ways? There are links in the description. Check those out. They help pay the therapy bills. No, I'm just playing. But you being here, thank you. I do appreciate you. I want to say that again. And until next time, well, we'll see.